All right, so I've tried and tried taking a light cut here and running it down and taking a light cut here and miking it. And each time I keep getting consistently three thousandths difference between here and here. So I, uh, I'm three thousandths taper over, well, what did I say that was, six or seven inches. So that's pretty significant, I guess. And it doesn't seem to be getting better. Now, leveling the lathe doesn't seem to be the answer. So I think I'm going to go back to this whole thing with the bearings. Because, again, the last thing I had found with the bearings was that I had gotten the bearings tightened down to a point where when I pull up and down on this, you know, the rod that I had in here, I would get pretty much zero indicator movement on the top. But then when I move it side to side, I would get movement. So let me show that again. All right, this isn't a really good angle, but um, just take my word for it. That I'm only getting, well, actually now I'm getting two to three thousandths up and down. Hmm, interesting. Okay, so I should be able to pull another shim. All right, I just pulled out a shim. All right, I just pulled out a two thousandths shim front and back. That's still about two thousandths play that way. Let's see what it is side to side though. Well, you're gonna love the uh, Noga holder. It's a regular contortionist. <laughs> Anyways, now with it on its side. All right, well that's interesting. Now I've got zero play side to side. Wait a minute, sounds like I get here play. Why isn't that moving? Uh, half a thousandth. I guess I should try another cut. Okay, preparing, preparing to make my next test cut. Um, what I did was I cleaned this up over here, established this area to be my first collar. This area to be my second collar, so I undercut this further. Um, I installed a brand new uh, I installed a brand new carbide cutter and reset the center height dead on. So now I should be able to take a really light cut and have it not rub as much as it was before. So, let's see. Oh, supper's ready, but let me see if I can just get knock this out before I go up. Maybe go eat my meal with good news on my mind. It still sounds like an intermittent cut. finish is better but it's still sounds like it's taking an intimate cut over here it's almost like a rub 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 noise that's two thousandths or actually a little under where I was closer to three and a half before well guys I'm at my wits end figuring out what the heck's going on with this thing um, I'm still turning a taper. Uh, let me zoom in on this and show the kind of finish I'm getting on this. The finish is great. So this is a uh, really nice finish on here. But I'm still turning a taper. Uh, I think I checked it and uh, found out that I'm like two and a half, three thousandths over probably like three inches. So it's a significant taper. But I'm not getting chatter and all those problems um, so I haven't been able to figure out what the heck's going on so I put my indicator on here I just had the indicator on the very top here very top of the of the uh, spindle and uh, pulling up on it I can't get any deflection but on the side here placing it on the side I can get If I get rough with it, I can get two thousandths deflection there. So two thousandths at that point 
might translate to quite a bit more out here. You know, so in other words, now I'm kind of like right on the side of this. Uh, let's see if I can flex this without getting in the way of the shot. That's pretty negligible, actually. I just don't think that's going to explain how much of a taper I've got going there. I mean, I'm looking at this taper that I'm seeing here. 240 thousandths right near the end here. And it's definitely... You know, it's loose over here, so it's going to be less. Oh, wait a minute. That's 240 there. Something's wrong. Yeah, I can feel it. <laughs> Hold on. Wasn't on it very good. Yeah, let me move this out of the way. That's 236 there. 239 there uh, nah, 240 237 I keep getting about that 3000s it's a consistent taper alright so one of the things I noticed last time I was working on this problem was the cross slide has a lot of play, quite a bit. So I've got to readjust my jib screws on the cross slide. Unfortunately though, I don't think that's going to account for my problem because pretty much when I'm making the cut, the, the force is going to be pushing back against the bit this way. It's going to pretty much want to keep this over like this during the cut and then it's not going to ease up until or try and come back until the cuts over so I don't think that's going to explain anything but um, I'll tighten them up and do a test cut and see okay I readjusted the jibs to remove that uh, play on the cross slide and uh, I'll take a cut Now. Uh, funny how it ended right there. Yeah, a lot of chatter marks in that cut. Now, oddly enough, just last night I made the cut that you would, that I just showed you, which is smooth as glass. And haven't changed anything other than tightening up the jibs. Although I was taking a heavier cut. So that's 234 thousandths on the end. I'm going to go in a little bit just because of the uh, roughness there. 230, uh, 236 and a half. 235? Huh. Interesting. Yeah, 233 and a half to 235 and a half. Two thousands. Huh. That's weird. Still looks like it's taking a heavier cut over here than over here. The chips changed in a, in a way that makes me think it's taking more of a cut here than here. Let's see. I already forgot which end's the thin end of my taper. 233. 230 and a half. I gotta go back to the micrometer. I mean, without a doubt, it's just thinner down here. Yeah, two and a half, three thousandths. Four 
thicker out here. Hmm. To make matters worse, I have another problem, which is my apron has suddenly decided to, uh, my carriage has suddenly decided to get difficult on me when I get down to a point here. I can barely turn the hand wheel. It's like it's jamming up on something. I can't figure out why. All right, there are no wipers on the uh, edges here, like on other lathes. I don't see any screws to mount any, so I don't know if by design there never were any. But I'm beginning to wonder whether or not I have some chips stuck underneath there. Because I uh, moved this back, and as I was moving it back and it would free up, I saw some chips laying on the, uh, on the ways. So the question is, is, is it possible that there was a chip that got wedged underneath there to the point where it was actually able to lift up on the uh, on the carriage here because that any anything jammed under there that would cause that would cause this to tilt either this way if it was on the back it would tilt this way or if it was on the front it would tilt this way that would definitely change things well guys I think I actually got it <clears throat> well, I was just about when I was gonna give up on uh, on this thing thinking that there was something really catastrophically wrong with the like maybe the way the headstock was mounted to the bed or that there was such severe wear on the bed that it was causing the problem I just did a uh, what I did was I undercut this section right here uh, to leave me two collars I just did a light test cut and uh, I'm just double checking it now but it looks like I'm within half a thousand Actually, I stand corrected. I think maybe it's not even half a thousandth out. I think it's right on. Maybe a quarter of a thousandth off between here and here. So, you're probably wondering, what did I do off camera? Well, I didn't want to go through the wasting all the video taping it, but essentially what I did was I redid the clearance on that bearing back there. My theory is that what was happening was even though I had the clearance on the front bearing good, I think that the back bearing clearance being out allowed this whole thing to actually kind of do this kind of a deal. So when I was pushing on it with the cut, making the cut, this whole this whole uh, piece was being pushed away because with that rear being sloppy, the front was acting as a pivot and allowing this to be away from the cutter. And then as I got closer to the chuck, there was less of a torque on that thing. I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what else to say. All I know is I couldn't get this thing in for, to save my life. And in desperation, I went and uh, redid the clearance on that rear bearing, did a test cut, and now all of a sudden it's, it's, it's in. It's right on. So go figure.